Sing in the meadows and everywhere. Sing out a blessing to everyone. Lift up your voices, lift your hands on high, sing and the battle is won. Sing in the meadows and everywhere, sing out a blessing to everyone. Lift up your voices, lift your hands on high, sing and the battle is won. Sing in the meadows and everywhere. Sing out a blessing to everyone. Lift up your voices, lift your hands on high, sing and the battle is won. Sing in the meadows and everywhere, sing out a blessing to everyone. Lift up your voices, lift your hands on high, sing and the battle is won. Sing in the meadows and everywhere, sing out a blessing to everyone. Lift up your voices, lift your hands on high, sing and the battle is won. Sing and the battle is won. Sing and the battle is won. Music, I think, is perhaps the most important art, because more than any other art, in my opinion at least, it touches the heart. The more you can listen to music, this is what they, a book I read uh, recently talked about, the Chinese emperors, that they would tour the provinces and they didn't ask to see the books or talk to the officials and all that. What they asked was to listen to the music. If the music was wrong, they knew something else would be wrong in the city government. If the music was right, everything was right. And if it was wrong, they knew that they didn't have to correct this. They had to correct the music. Now, there's a lot of truth in that. It may be a myth, it may not be an actual fact. It doesn't matter. There are many truths that are not necessarily factual, but they, they illustrate principles that are eternal. When your music is right, your heart is right. That's what is so sad about today's music. It is so jagged, so frenetic. I, I look back over the... I always read human, people's consciousness through music. And as I look back through the history of popular music, because that says it more, so from, say, let's say the 18th century with the minuet, which was graceful but very stylized, up through the waltz. You know, people used to think the waltz was really degenerate. Women touching men, <gasps> unthinkable. In public, <gasps> you know? So there was a lot of thought that this was debased music. Well, they hadn't seen nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you came up into the, into the uh, 20th century, and people's arms, legs sort of flying everywhere, completely out of control. Then you got into the big band, ba bam, ba bam, so much ego. Everything in music has a message. It says something. And when you listen to the music of rock and roll and heavy metal and all these things, you're really exposing yourself to a rate of, a state of consciousness, not just music. It is not just a question of taste. It's a question of truth. And does your truth really resonate with restlessness and anguish and anger and violence? I don't believe it does because you're a child of God as much as I am. God wants to express himself and enjoy himself through all. God wants you 
to come to him. And that means you need to listen to music that soothes your consciousness, that uplifts your consciousness. You need meditation. You may say, well, I can just see myself sitting there cross-eyed, doing nothing, thinking nothing. That's not what it's all about. When you lift your consciousness, there's so much sweetness. Welcome again, everybody. <clears throat> I'd like to start with a brief reading from the book, Awaken to Super Consciousness. These are Swamiji's words. The Maharani of Kuch Bihar told me she'd once asked her family priest why he intoned his chant so loudly. Well, you see, your highness, he explained, God is far away. If I don't shout, how will he hear me? God isn't far away, of course. It is we who distance ourselves from him by the noise of our own minds, a noise people often carry with them into prayers and meditation. Loud chanting does have its place. It is good at the start of a meditation, not for the reason that priests gave, but to command attention from our own minds. This is a, such a wonderful and, and important topic today because music is a language, music is prayer, music is vibration, music is consciousness, music can be uplifting, music can pull you down, M music can be open your heart, music can be heavy, music can be sensual, music can be devotional. It depends on what kind of music you're listening to, what you're playing, um, what you uh, are attuned to. Music carries a particular ray and Master brought a particular ray. Swamiji brought that particular ray as well. And that ray keeps us in attunement with God and gurus. When we listen to other kinds of music, we go to other places, we do other kinds of chanting, we turn on something else, whatever it is, we are getting out of tune with our particular ray. Just like our books have a particular vibration, our satsangs have a particular vibration. What we say, our attitudes, the, the qualities have a particular vibration. Master's talks have a particular vibration. Swamiji's talks have a particular vibration. Thus, our music carries that same vibration. And it's important that we realize that and not just play anything and listen to anything and think it doesn't affect us. It is affecting you. And the consciousness of the person who wrote it is affecting you. The consciousness of the person who's playing it is affecting you. The notes of the music is affecting you. All of the above are in having an effect on your consciousness. And so Swamiji said his music is uplifting. It, it attuned it, every piece of music, and there's 400 of them. If you don't know, if you're not playing them, 400 of those songs. And he said he attuned everyone to the consciousness of Om, the consciousness of God. And Master said he sang his chants over and, over and over and over and over and over. He probably didn't have to sing them that many times, but until he got a response from God. Wow. So we sing those chants and we this door is open to feel the response as joy or as peace or as love or as wisdom what master felt in the chant we can feel that too if we go deep enough in that chant and swamiji said there's a lot of wonderful chants in, in india there's all kinds mainly of singing holy names but uh he said some of those are okay for us to continue to sing but don't sing them all the time i see people just singing those all the time and they're avoiding Master's chants and Swamiji's chants. And Master, he would, he went to America with those chants. It's not like, oh, nobody wants to sing those chants. And he told people, don't tell me Americans aren't going to sing these chants. Music is a, a language, a, a universal language. So he went, he got a harmonium, he started chanting. Americans loved it. They got up to, standing on their feet chanting, oh, God, beautiful, with Master for an hour and a half. 
That's saying a whole lot. He had the people singing the same words over and over. People got healed. People became students and disciples. People learned how to meditate. He may have had them meditating right after. And he told Swamiji, you're going to have a long, long, hard path until you open your heart. Now, why did Master sing with those people? He sang to get their hearts open so they could have the experience of God within their own consciousness, within their own being, within their own heart, and not just think about it, talk about it, sit and listen about it. That's not enough. He said chanting is half the battle. Half the battle of the experience of God is chanting. Not any chant, but the right chant is what I'm trying to say today. And so Swamiji, what did he do? He went out and bought a harmonium. He started to chant. And then he heard Master tell, because Swamiji felt, oh, I changed myself. I changed myself. Now I'm devotional, whatever. He heard someone that he took, Master told the monks, look how I changed him. Look how I changed Walter. Now what happened? Ma Swamiji opened himself up and Master could get in. It's such a beautiful thought. He was, his heart was closed. And so through the chanting, through bhakti, through devotion, Swamiji was able to attune better to his guru. And so chanting, is, it brings a blessing, it brings attunement to the gurus, it brings attunement to God, it uplifts you in a higher consciousness, it clears the mind of debris, it gets the emotions out of your heart, it brings calmness and peace and stillness. How can you sit and meditate if you don't chant? I don't know how people do it. I'm in Mumbai now, and I've been here for some days, and we were chanting every day. I mean, I just loved it at Mud Island and Whirly and just I wanted to chant at the cafe. We didn't have a chance to, but um, every chance we got, we just people, we just said, get, get an instrument. <laughs> Let's just sit down and chant. Nobody wanted to leave at the Whirly Center on Sunday with the satsang. I, we people were bursting out in joy, singing from joy, joy, ever new joy. I mean, and then what happens afterwards? You're so still. I felt Master was in the room. It was Guru Purnima. We open ourselves up with the Guru to come through the chant. It's such a powerful, powerful technique, a powerful tool that we have chanting. And when before I came to Ananda, I listened to jazz. I listened to whatever the music was, the popular music, and it was completely restless it was even some of it was demonic i'm going to tell you that so many most of it was heavy and sensual and brought the energy down in the lower chakras that's why people dance in the way that they do and i i played that i listened to that for a while and then uh this is a, thank god it was pre ananda then i started playing the violin and cello and i just went wow there's classical music there's another type of music i had never heard it before and it was fresh, it was purifying. It was more uh, higher consciousness. And then that was a step to when I got to Ananda and I got to Ananda and I went, whoa, this is, I mean, in the black community, they were saying that was soul music. I tell you the soul music was the spiritual music. This real spirituals and the real soul music I got from master at Ananda. A master's chants and Swamiji's chants and that was the soul music that opened up the soul so that I could experience the presence of God. And, and then after that, I just you just want to sit and just absorb that vibration, that touch of the divine, the blessings, the grace that you receive. And, and I began to, I remember Swamiji asked me, he said, can you sing? And I said, no, I can't sing, but I could sing. I just didn't, I was shy about singing. He said, get in the choir and so I got in a choir, started singing the Swamiji songs, and he was writing music. We were singing the music, and I was just in love. It just was so thrilling. It was a memory of a vibration. This is my own vibration. This is the vibration of God through the guru and through the songs. And, and then I got a harmonium. I started chanting, and I met Swamiji. He had a big tanpura. He would play that tanpura and sing different as spiritual songs that he had written. And then he had a harmonium. He had somebody playing a tabla. Uh, he had the guitar. I mean, and we had the kirtos. I just fell in love. 
once I fell in love and fell in love through the opening of the heart, through the music, the rest came easily. The meditation after kirtan, how do you feel? You can't move. After chanting, how do you feel? You can't move. And every satsang I ever went on Swamiji's, he started with the chant, then he brought up a choir or a small group to sing some or one of the songs. Why? To open people up. You can't, you can't just talk. People, they, they don't get it. There's a big wall there. There's distractions. There's delusions. There's a, a wrong attitudes. There's heaviness. There's emotions. There's sadness. There's happiness. I remember this. Um, it's not a whole lot of happiness, but there was one lady who came to Ananda Village. We called her the sound lady because she had a big machine and she was healing people through the sound vibration that came out of that machine. And she, uh, let me just check on the time. Yeah. Okay. So she had that machine and then she um, would, I guess it did heal some people. I didn't go to her. But what was interesting is by the end, the lady said, because she had heard Ananda music. By the end, she said, why don't you just listen to your own music? You don't need the sound machine. And that's the thing. People go hither and yon. Why don't you listen to your own music? Besides that, why don't you play the music? Why don't you get a harmonium or tanpuri or some instrument and start singing? Everybody says they can't sing because you're not a professional singer. Well, who is a professional singer? There's a very small percentage of people. But if you start singing, your voice gets better. I know a lot of people didn't have a good voice and their voice got better. My voice has gotten better. Over and more I sing and I sing every day. And in the car, I sing all the way to the destination, all the way back, whoever's driving, they know all the songs. And then Master even, he played he played the harmonium. He played the esraj. He played surely Tanpura, surely. And he, he, he had uh, a gong and I have an esraj. I play that. I play the tanpur. I play the harmonium. I play the kirtas. I play the gong. You, you need music. You need the sound to break up the stress and the tensions and the delusions and the worries and the fears. And if you think you're going to meditate deeply without it, I would rethink it. And what should you do? Get an instrument. First of all, get the music and just start listening. Play it in the car. Play it in the house. Play it when your kids are bugging you. Play when the relatives are bugging you. Play it in the. I play it in the airport if there's too much noise. Play it on the airplane. Play it and anywhere. Play it in the taxi, and just it gets you right back to center. Play it, play it, and play it. Secondly, play it. Get an <laughs> instrument. Do something. Harmonium isn't hard to play. We're having a music workshop in Gargan on Sunday at 11 o'clock. Um, and we're going to play music on different, learn different instruments, sing Swamiji songs. I'm going to talk about the effects of music. There's even studies that show that heavy music kills plants. The plants that put the speakers next, Dorothy Ritalik is her name, the woman who did these experiments. She put the music the uh plants next to speakers playing heavy metal music and the plants died what do you think it's doing to your consciousness what do you think it's doing to your mind your emotions you can't remember anything now there's heaviness in your heart if you play good music i practice every day the music i'm playing the esraj and what do i play i told my teacher i don't want to learn any Ragas, I want to learn the 400 songs of Swami Kriyananda. That's all. And that's my goal. Learn the 400 songs. And what it gives me every day, I'm thinking about this music. I'm hearing it in my mind. I'm playing it. I'm singing it. And so first, get the music and listen to it. Get some instrument, even a little keyboard and play something or play with the kirtals or something. And then meditate after you play the music, even if it's just on your phone playing the music, meditate afterwards, see, see what the result is from playing that music. And then if you feel it's helping you, which how can it not help you, then play it, I would say, as a sadhana every day, just play some every day, sing it, play it. And you will find, as Master said, it's half, half is a lot. 
half the battle to feeling the presence of God, half the battle of getting rid of delusion, half the battle of uplifting your consciousness, probably half the battle of going into samadhi, half the battle of lifting yourself up. Do it. Do what Master said. You will find it's a powerful, powerful practice. I know. I've been singing these songs and playing them for almost 50 years and it's completely changed my consciousness. I'd like to ask Nitendra now to play um, one. Well, we have another clip of a video of Swamiji and then another song that we'll sing together. And then we'll go into questions and answers. So please go ahead, Nitendra. There was one song that was banned from the radio back before television days. It was called Gloomy Sunday. And so many people listening to that song committed suicide that finally it was banned from the airwaves as a dangerous thing. Music can have a great influence on you. Don't listen. I told you about this woman who tried to commit suicide. It was She failed, but she had a near-death experience where she, in the other world, she was in this hellish region and she found that the vibrations of that were rock and roll music there is evil in that music there's an incentive to violence and negativity and low kinds of emotions please listen to me i would like to hear when people go to places like restaurants and so on instead of this restless music which just distracts the mind it's a disturbance i would like the restaurants and the hotels and public places to play good music. You know, there was one place where, um, a store where young people used to come and gather and smoke pot and do different uh, drink and so on. And the man couldn't persuade them to leave. But then he got a, an inspiration and he played Mozart over the loudspeaker. Within two weeks, the place was cleared. Those people didn't want to be around that kind of vibration. Seek that music which will uplift you. And you will find that that's a very important thing. Now, please sing along on just very briefly a couple of chants we have. That gives you a sample of a couple of chants, and now we'll go into the questions. Thank you so much, Dhanaji. These are such wonderful chants. The first question, Dhanaji, is I like many different types of music, and you said that um, we also look at other music. So I play them as well on the guitar. So just to, do I have to just listen to Ananda music only? I think aim in that direction, but you can't go just drop everything typically. People will say it, but they don't do it, isn't it so? So I would say to um, aim in that direction. I mean, you can listen to some other type, classical or whatever. The type of music is most important. If you're still listening to heavy music or sensual music or emotional music, I mean, I would rethink it. You're just, you're just like pushing from both sides of the door. You're doing Kriya, but then you get, you're listening to the wrong kind of music. And it's just, it's affecting your consciousness. This is what we're saying today. It's not like a choice that I, I like this, so I'm playing it. You can like it, but 
it's not ours. It's not our vibration. It's not our path. It's not our way. And and I see that happening. People have all kinds of music they're playing. I get in people's cars and they're playing the wrong kind of music. It's not right. So correct yourself. You can take some time to correct, but don't just uh, say, well, it doesn't matter. I'll that's one part of the path I won't follow. <laughs> I mean, that's, I think everybody has, that's one thing I won't do, but it's wrong. Do what Master said. And Swamiji said, listen to what I'm telling you. It's a, it's a force. So yes, try to aim in that. Don't try, aim in that direction. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. The next one is, what's the best music for relatives in the house who are not, not a on the path and especially for my restless children gosh there's so many songs i would play some of swamiji's songs that are of the heart there's so many wonderful that ones that aren't specifically god i'd like have you seen sorrento emerald isle um good night sweetheart the hill that was tara um initiation into the mysteries. I mean, there, there's 400 songs and chants. <laughs> I think you can pick the ones. And for restless children, I know one mom told me some years back that she played Om in the house all the time. And I know some of the centers have this little machine that plays the Om and uh, mantras. And that's a good thing to have going for kids kids and other people who aren't that interested. And in India, everybody knows mantras. And so it's it's an easy one to get accepted. Um, yeah, try that. Thank you, Danaji. One last I think, question. I think, is, one, hold is on, I, I think one more thing is <laughs> that if you start chanting in your house with the harmonium, it's going to change the vibration of your whole house and likely your family. I mean, when I was playing the violin after all that jazz and kind of music in our house, my poor parents said, oh, no, she's bringing home the violin because I didn't own a violin. I rented it but from the school, but I practiced every day. And I know that classical music picked me up from the heavy, the jazz music. Then from there, I only have to pick up for Ananda's music. So I think if you play it also with your harmonium in the house or Tanpur or whatever, people are going to feel that vibration. Our music is, has a very, very high vibration and people sense it and uh, they're drawn to it. So also play it yourself. And I find myself singing all the time. I I wasn't singing all the time before, but since I started playing instruments more, remember one of my friends, Dr. Aditya, no, Swami Aditya, we, we, he was driving, we were driving from Mumbai to Pune once, and I just sang the whole way. And he says, Diana, is this something new for you? <laughs> I said, I can't help but sing. After a while, you just can't help it. And that's the thing I think, the sin your family will feel the sincerity. They hear you. They hear you and they're chanting. They're gonna quiet down typically. Thank you, Danaji. The last question is related to that only. So is learning the harmonium really helpful even for one's meditation? And if I don't sing well, then and don't know anything about the music, then also can I learn? Get in a class. I mean, I didn't know one thing about an Esraj, but I got a teacher. Now I've been playing a year and I can play about a hundred songs, but Swamiji's songs and, and Master and Swamiji's chants. But why not go to the center and get a class? You can also take voice lessons. I mean, it's it's a cop out to say, I can't sing and I can't play an instrument. Gee, you know, do you want to go half? have half the battle taken care of or not. So <laughs> it's up to you. Come to the class. If you're in, in Gurgaon, come to the class on Sunday and we'll help you to learn. And, and there's teachers at every center who teach the harmonium. And 
I think they teach voice and, and Bharat, he's in charge of our music Sangha. You can get him to teach you. What I'm saying is don't do have a cop out, do something about it. When the voice is, it's an instrument of God. And if your voice is and heavy and it's not good, work at it. You know, work at getting your voice to be sweeter. And um, you, what I'm saying is you can work at it. It's not, oh, God, I have to wait for another lifetime to be able to sing and play an instrument. Do it now. And uh, I know you play well, Natendra. And you were playing an instrument before, but uh, he took it up and now he's a good chanter. So I know several people like that. It's not uh, impossible. It's very possible. Not only is it possible, it's necessary. So. Try it and do step by step. And I think you'll really, really open your heart. As Swami Sri Tesraji said, you can't take even one step on the path until your heart is open. That's big. And you can take leaps once your heart gets open. Okay. Thank you, Natendra. Thank you, everybody. God bless.